G'day Brewers, in this video I'm going to tell you everything that you need to know about your louder ton rakes, how to use them and what's the best practice for your brew day. Let's get brewing. My name is Hendo and I'm from Rockstar Brewer. I give brewers the tools they need to make amazing beer. So if you want to know more about that, hit me up on the website. And if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. Each week, I answer questions from professional brewers just like you to help them make amazing beer. If you've got a question that you want me to answer, leave a comment below. This week's question comes from Rupert, and he writes, G'day Hendo, loving the info that you're sharing in these videos. Not sure if it's too late to ask a question, but if it isn't, I'd love to get your opinion on the correct use of rakes in a mashed lauder ton, not temperature controlled. I've been reading conflicting views. Cheers. It's never too late to ask a question here, so don't worry about it. When you start out as a professional brewer, there's so many things you've got to get your head around. And one of those things is how to manage your lauder ton and how to manage your wort runoff from your lauder ton to your kettle. Now, I've been fortunate enough to work at a lot of different breweries in a lot of different places over the years. And one thing that I can tell you is that every lauder ton is different. They all have their own personality. And so the reason you've probably been receiving conflicting views around the use of rakes is that everybody's experience is different. And it just is. And in my experience, I've used a lot of lauder tons over the years. Some have had rakes and some haven't. So my advice to you when it comes to managing the rakes in your lauder ton is rather than sort of working out when you got a rake, work out the personality of your lauder ton. So when I go into a new brewery and I brew on a brand new brew house that I've never brewed on before for the first time, I like to get to know the brew house and in particular, the Lord of Tons personality. So I'm gonna give you these tips on how to get to know a Lord of Ton and how to get the most out of your new brew house. Tip number one, regularly check your grain mill and the crush of your grist. When you're running a commercial brewery, it's a really good idea to check your mill gap and therefore your crush, uh, at least on a weekly basis. If your grain mill gap is too tight, your grist is gonna to be too fine, and you may risk having a stuck mash, which completely sucks. If your mill gap is too wide, then your grist crush is going to be too coarse, and you're gonna lose extraction. So rather than talk about mash efficiency, I talk about brew length, and that's the volume of work you can make with a certain amount of grist. Your job as a professional brewer is to maximize the brew length and minimize the amount of grist that you use. But when it comes to setting your mill gap, you've got to strike that balance. I'll cover off how to check your mill gap and to measure your grist in another video. Tip number two, measure your kettle volume of your runnings as you're laudering. When you're running off work from the lauder ton to the kettle, it's important that you remain attentive. And the first part about remaining attentive is being able to accurately measure the volume of work in your kettle during the runoff. Make sure that your kettle has a sight glass with some graduation marks, or maybe a measuring stick so you can dip it into the work and find out what the volume of the word is in the kettle. But whatever you happen to use, make sure that you can measure your kettle volume accurately. Tip number three, be able to measure the gravity of your runnings and the wort in the kettle during the runoff. When I'm running off wort from the lauder ton to the kettle, I like to take very frequent gravity measurements in two places. The first place is a sample port at some point between the lauder ton and the kettle, so I can measure the gravity of the runnings. The second place where I like to check gravity is the actual wort in the kettle itself. When it comes to taking a gravity reading of the wort in your kettle, don't forget to mix the wort in your kettle thoroughly before taking your sample. With my runnings wort, I'm keeping an eye on how quick the gravity of the runnings drops. If the gravity of the runnings drops particularly quickly, then it means that I might be channeling. If the gravity drops slowly, that's good. But most importantly, what I'm looking for in my runnings gravity is I'm looking to stick to the 6-3 rule. What's the 6-3 rule? So the 6-3 rule is I don't let my runnings go below three Play-Doh and above six pH. Because below a gravity of three and above a pH of six, you're definitely gonna be extracting tannins from the grist into your beer. When I'm measuring the gravity of the wort in the kettle, 
I'm basically going to do the dilution calculation to make sure that my starter boil gravity is going to be on spec and to kind of guesstimate where, what sort of starter boil gravity I'm going to wind up with because it's going to be different every time you brew. I've made a video about the dilution calculation and I'll leave it in the description below. When I'm running off work from the Lauder Ton to the kettle, I'm not running off a set volume of work to the kettle, rather I stop running off work to the kettle when I reach my target starter boil gravity. Gravity is the key number here not volume. When I'm getting to know the personality of a brew house that I've never brewed on before, I like to make a little table. So I measure the time, the runnings gravity, the runnings pH, and the kettle volume, and the kettle gravity. And I'll take this measurement about every 10 to 15 minutes. Now when you're taking lots of uh, gravity samples with hot work, you're going to need a way that you can actually take that reading really, really quickly so you can get back to being attentive to your runoff. So I just simply use a homebrew refractometer. They're not exactly precise and accurate, but for brew day, it's good enough. It just means that I can make some judgment calls on the fly. I make sure that my runoff from the Lauder Ton to the kettle lasts about 90 minutes. You don't want to go too slow and you definitely don't want to go too fast. 90 minutes is a pretty good number. So if I've got a brew house, uh, where I need 5,500 litres of wort as my start of boil gravity, that's going to be about 55 to 60 litres per minute. A 90 minute runoff means that you're not going to run into the situation where you're going to pull the grain bed down, compress it and wind up with a stuck mash. And to a lesser extent, it means that you're not going to channel the sparge liquor through the grain bed either. As you take these regular measurements, and you read your runnings gravity as it's on its way from the Lauder Ton to the kettle, if you find that there's a rapid drop in gravity, that means that you might be starting to channel. And this is where using your Lauder Ton rakes might come into play. Channeling means that the sparge water uh, that's supposed to rinse the sugars from the grain bed is actually going through one part of the grain bed because it's always gonna take the path of least resistance. By raking the grain bed, you're actually cutting it so that it creates new channels and new paths of least resistance in parts of the grain bed where there's still lots of sugars to be extracted. And by sending the sparge liquor through those parts of the grain bed, you're gonna get better extraction and more brew length. If I have to rake the grain bed, I make sure that the motor is set really, really slowly and I only rake either a half turn or a full turn because I'm trying not to disturb the grain bed too much. Most rakes in Lauder Tons are actually pretty well designed and they come off just far enough off the false bottom so that you can actually continue running off work to the kettle whilst you're raking. But again, that depends upon the design of your particular brew house. If you find that you're pulling through lots of grain husks and that sort of thing and the turbidity of your work is getting pretty bad, then there's nothing wrong with stopping your sparge, doing your very, very gentle rake, recirculating the work back into the Lauder Ton for a few minutes before continuing to run off to the kettle. Eventually, you'll wind up with clear wort again. So when it comes to using your Lauder Ton rakes, the answer to your question is, well, there's really no one correct way to do it. But hopefully with the techniques I've given you, you can actually get to know the personality of your Lauder Ton when you start brewing on a new brew house. Because your job as a professional brewer is to make lots of decisions on the fly in order to make the best product you possibly can. And with practice, you'll find out what works and what doesn't, and you'll find one way that you can actually just stick to, and that way brews will become more repeatable and more predictable. Thanks heaps for your question, Rupert. I really appreciate it. If you've got a professional brewing question that you'd like me to answer, feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks very much for watching, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.